the girl needs to like you more than you like her. And the only way that happens is you're striving, you're being excellent, she's following your lead, you're happy. And then on top of that, you can replace her anytime. And I know it sounds evil for me to say it that way, but that's how you get the best out of women. Since the beginning of time, women have always been attracted to men that have social proof, that have other women, that have a strong circle of friends, etc. And that's the only way she's gonna feel happy. Her hypergamy is satisfied because she's chasing you, so the doubt is gone, and she knows that she can be replaced. That's how you get a loyal and dutiful girlfriend. What's up, guys, and welcome to the podcast. How you Thanks doing? Thanks for having us, man. Good, man. Good to be in Dubai. It feels weird because like, out of the, like, the first few podcasts which I was listening to, yours was one of them. Yeah. I think back in, 20, back in 2021, that was when I first discovered you guys. Mm, Do you want to wow. take a wild guess? And who, who was the first person which I listened to on your podcast? Probably our homie and, Tate. And Tate. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, yeah first no. ever, ever podcast that I heard him on. Yeah. No, um, you guys have definitely put people on the map for sure. No, absolutely. I don't, you know, Andrew's a good friend. So for me, I was just, we're just conversation, you know, between some friends. So we we're just chopping it up and, you know, ended up being a really great interview. But, you know, we agree with Andrew on about like 99%. The of thing things, is, so. he was always big. People just didn't know who he was yet. Yeah. yeah. Pretty much it. Yeah. Because they had been famous in Romania for a very long time. It's just that, you know, the Western world hadn't known so, too, too much yet because they were shadow banned. But, uh, but no, nah, man, I mean, for us, we're like, yo, when our homies do well, we're, we're happy. So that's what it's about. How long have you guys been doing the podcast for now? We started in 20, our first episode was October 26, 2020. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Nice. And, and then you, Andrew I came, I think that next year, because Andrew had done an interview with Fresh first, and then he came on our podcast uh, around May of 2021 mm -hmm. uh, when he actually came to Miami. And uh, yeah, it was epic. We went on the boat. We hung out. Um, we did Miami Aikido. Yeah, Miami Aikido. <laughs> uh, and then we uh, and then we came back to the studio. We did the podcast. Yeah. And, you know, I'm real big on when you bring a guest in, let them talk. And I had already known his worldviews and stuff. And I was like, yo, you guys got to hear this guy. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was probably one of the best interviews ever. And it was, it was awesome. And Andrew and Tristan are very smart individuals. Mm -hmm. Very, very smart. And, uh, you know, we're happy that we had played a, a minor role in their success. They were going to be successful no matter what. Those guys are brilliant, brilliant in what they do and really smart. So it was just a matter of, you know, if we can play a little bit of a role, awesome. But they were going to get it anyway. Yeah. How how old? Are, okay, so first of all, which one of you is fresh and which is fit? <laughs> <laughs> Can you guess? <laughs> he's, oh, he's fit. Yeah, yeah he's somewhat. Fit. Yeah, he's somewhat fit. fit. Right, maybe. And then and then fresh. Do you used to be a personal trainer. Yeah, or so I do have an online fitness business too. Mm -hmm. I haven't been uh, pushing that as much. I do have a few clients, but um, but in general, I've been pushing, working on the podcast mostly. Yeah. So yeah. Well, yeah, what I've discovered now after starting this, I think I'm about eight or nine episodes in. This is like a full-time thing. Yeah. yeah. If you really want to, <laughs> yeah. if you want to make it work, you have to devote yeah. quite a lot of time and yeah. effort into it. Yeah, because I uh, yeah. how it originally started was I was um, I was a federal agent with Homeland Security first, mm -hmm. and then what ended up happening was I started a fitness business on the side, and to augment the fitness business, I was like, let me start a YouTube channel. So I started putting out some fin fitness content, and then I was like, man, this stuff isn't hitting as hard as it used to. I'm sure you you know you're, yeah, you've yeah. been you're OG oh, yeah. in the fitness was, game. You know, I was lucky when I got yeah. started with it. For sure. So um, I remember like fitness YouTube was huge like 2010 to like 2015 ish, and then it kind of started to fall off a bit. And then, you know, I came in with the fitness stuff and I was like, and then I noticed that, you know, a lot of guys were struggling with girls. I was in Miami at the time and I was like, you know, I'm a decent with the ladies. And then I realized that like a big reason why so many guys aren't able to get girls is because they're just not attractive. Like they don't, they're not in shape. They don't dress well. They don't smell good. They don't have a good personal care. Um, you know, they don't have their money on point. And these are all things that are like critical to get like the hottest girl. So we're like, damn, we got to help guys become better all around. So that's kind of what started the podcast. Um, but I still do have my fitness business. Just that, yeah, I, I can't like put mm -hmm. as much time into it as I used to because now you're seeing it now. Like running yeah. a fitness business while doing a podcast, if you really want to take off, it's like you got to pick one almost. Yeah. And then also as a workload. So, so for example, a lot of people start podcasts, right? They might do one or two a week. We used to do seven shows, sorry, seven days a week. And really? two or three shows a day, like two or three hours. It's crazy, bro. We put in a lot of work. Yeah. Yeah. When, yeah. Like back when we like uh, were first get like when we we're filming back then with Andrew, we're doing like, yeah, six, six shows a week. Like we're filming every day on pretty much. Yeah. And then uh, and it's all live too. And then you'll bring out like these crazy ass chicks. So that, that always gets wild. For a year and a <laughs> half, no vacations, no fun time, just focus on a work podcast. Yeah, for like, a, I would say for like at least a year, year and a half, we yeah. were doing uh, like quite a bit of volume. Well, well, I think that's what you need to do really to get something up and running. Agreed. Yeah. Particularly now the podcast is becoming more popular. You need to do yeah. something which is going to make it stand out. Yeah. Everyone's doing it now, bro. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. it's like. But uh, I like what you guys do because you, you, I feel like you're doing something different when you're getting all these women involved. 
Like yeah. that's not really something you see very often. Yeah. Um, not, no, I was copying the formula, but <laughs> let's just say the pioneers started the, the wave, you know? Yeah, yeah. no, it, it's interesting because it kind of how it started was we were, uh, we went on a double date and, you know, we drank a little bit, I ain't gonna lie. We normally, we don't drink like that, yeah. but uh, we, had, we had a double date with these two girls. Fresh looks at me and he's like, yo, we should go live right now. Mind you, it's like two in the morning. And yeah, I was bro. like, what? And two girls was like, you know he's what? Like, let's just do it. Go live, bro. Because we were having a good conversation with the girls and we just said, you know, let's just do it on air. And then it ended up like, taken off people really enjoyed it so we just like you know what let's scale this up and then we just started bringing more and more girls on and just having discussions and i realized like how many modern day women nowadays are fairly delusional about the male experience so i kind of you know was like you know what let's have these podcasts where we kind of bring girls in and have discussions and talk about you know dating and relationships and it's just really i don't, I don't think they're helping themselves out yeah <laughs> it's dude it, it's really like eye opening to see like how many women are just like unaware of I'm just going to say it. how easy their life is, how easy dating is. Like dating is on easy mode for girls to the point where they don't even realize that it, they're, they're super privileged. It's wild. Yeah. And also for guys, like, for example, girls don't know what guys really want. So yeah. imagine a girl's trying to date guys and capture this high value guy, but you don't know what he wants. Yeah. You never, it's never, it's never going to work. So that's yeah. scary, bro. Well, it's, it's good that you guys are doing this and more people are because, you know, I'm 32, you're 33, how old are you? 30. Yeah. So we all know what it was like back in the days growing up we didn't really have these figures to look up to yeah yeah and sort of pave the way yeah. like even when i'm making videos now i'm making videos for my younger self yeah. who didn't really have the right people to get advice from mm -hmm. so you're doing some really good work thanks man. social media thank you so much yeah uh social media is kind of like a double-edged sword because on one end right it gives you all the information you need you're able to you know look anything up in mere seconds it's fantastic right it's the information age but at the same time it's kind of been a double-edged sword and a negative for men because what's happened as a byproduct of that is that women have like tremendously increased mm. their standards, which leaves a lot of guys out in the dust. Uh, you know, th there's studies coming out all the time that show that women find like, you know, 90% of men plus as unattractive, right? Mm -hmm. Like only the top five to 10%. A study actually came out a couple weeks ago, right before I put out this book, that uh, the top 5% of men were by far the most promiscuous getting all the girls sexually. Mm -hmm. So... It's just, it's becoming more and more pronounced. And I think as feminism gets stronger and women earn more money and, you know, Instagram and social media takes off even more so, girls are going to be even more selective. So a lot of guys don't stand a chance, unfortunately, yeah. which is what we're kind of bringing attention to to let guys know, hey, you if you want to be able to get the dating life that you want, you are going to have to work for it. The days of being a nice guy and making 50,000 hours a year and being average and everything and getting a, you know, a dutiful girlfriend that's going to love you, respect you and submit to you. Those days are almost gone. It's not enough. Yeah, it's not enough. So this is the book. I actually, <laughs> I read this last night. It's good because it's not like a massive book, but yeah. it's got like the essentials in. Yeah. I highly recommend it. I actually wish I had this book when I was in my early 20s. Mm. Yeah. It would have saved me a lot of time, a lot of money and probably quite a lot of heartbreak as well. Yeah. So we'll dive right into this. I want to know, first of all, why, what made you want to write this? So from doing the podcast, we've interviewed now almost 2,000 girls mm -hmm. on the show from different walks of life, from different states, different countries, different education levels. I know people say, you only bring dumb bimbos on. That's not true. Because if you watch the beginning of the show, we always go around the panel and ask the girls, what do you do for work? What's your highest education level completed, et cetera, to get a, you know, an idea. And there, sometimes we'll have like one girl on the panel that has a master's degree, another girl that does OnlyFans, another girl that does porn, another girl that works in the professional world. So people say, oh, you only have OnlyFans girls on, but that's not true. Yeah, mm -hmm. We bring all different types of girls on. But what I've found is that regardless of woman's education level, her background, et cetera, they still have a fairly unrealistic expectation of what they want in a man. And worse yet, they think they deserve and are entitled to that man without necessarily having to work on themselves. Mm -hmm. And I've realized this from regardless of the woman's background, so for me doing that and then also looking at the data, right, the objective data as well as my anecdotal data from doing the show, because at this point, I don't think anyone has, has interviewed more women than I have, right? Uh, it's very obvious that men really need to level up and focus on themselves and then girls become the byproduct of the leveling up versus guys, oh, well, let me do everything to get a girl. Let me get a girl. And it's like they chase the women. They don't chase the success. And when you chase the women, what ends up happening is you have to work exponentially harder because you're dealing with someone that didn't like you in the first place. And I go into that in one of the chapters, how women really don't like men that much from, to begin with. I like how you, start, how you start this off. This book does not call for refusing to help your fellow human if it's a woman, nor does it call for refusing to work, interact, or socialize with women in society. 
It is to prevent you from wasting your resources on the unreciprocated romantic pursuit of women to the point it ruins your life. Exactly. I know a few guys right now, some of my friends who are literally ruining their life yeah. Yeah. in the pursuit of just trying to please a woman and make them happy and just making them their priority. Yeah. That's, I, my, that's my scary, bro. My yeah. biggest thing is I tell guys all the time, like, you know, haha, why women deserve less. But in general, if you find a girl that's worth it, that's cool. She's she's loyal to you. She's missive to you. She makes your life easier. She's an asset versus a liability. Treat her well. You know, right. I, I definitely think the man should be the provider. I believe in the nuclear family. I believe that a man should take care of his family and his children and be the main provider. And I genuinely think that the man should be the breadwinner and the woman should work only if she chooses to. It should be elective for her. Right. Mandatory for you as a man, elective for her. And I think that's when the dynamic is the best. Uh, but the problem is that most girls don't respect that. And most girls nowadays don't deserve that, to be honest with mm -hmm. you. And my thing is I want guys to protect themselves and their resources for the women that do deserve it versus the majority that don't. Yeah. And you would say a lot of these issues and problems have come about over the past 10, 20 years, largely due to technology and social media. Bro. Social media. Yeah. Feminism started it and social media is, is exacerbating the problem by yeah. definitely because it's given women unrealistic expectations as to where they stand in the sexual marketplace. And what I mean by that is, let's say you take a girl that's a six or a seven, right? That not the most attractive, but somewhat attractive above average, right? That woman now has access to men that are exceptional, if not top tier. And thanks to Instagram and social media, the internet, dating apps, all this stuff, right? And what ends up happening is she might get a date with one of these guys. She might get flown up by one of these guys. She might even smash one of these guys. But the reality is that she's never going to be able to lock down one of these guys. Mm. And what I've come to realize from interviewing so many girls is they conflate sexual market value, them being attractive with relationship market value, them being able to lock down a guy. And I would argue most girls are good at this, being able to get a guy, but can they keep them? And most yeah. girls can't. That's why so many of them are single. That's why so many of them have, you know, cats and dogs. And we have more single women now than ever before. So the problem is the guy's game is to attain the girl. The girl's game is can you retain the guy after sex? And I'd argue most modern day women can't. Yeah. And the data shows that. They don't really have anyone telling them how to do that. Yeah. Do you think they're better off getting advice on that from men or from women? I, I think so, because um, men are leaders, right? And what I've realized from from girls, and we've even, even done this on the show, where I'll tell a girl an objective truth about what men find attractive and the chances of her finding that man. We have a delusion calculator. A supporter of ours made it, and it's literally based on the U.S. Census Bureau and a national health survey, right? So it has probably the most accurate data figure points as far as like many United States. So we asked girl, what height do you want them to be? How much do you want them to earn, et cetera, et cetera. We go through it, right? Most of the girls pick a guy that's in the top 1%, if not less, when it comes to earning potential, height, not being obese, race, et cetera. And this guy is like 1% of the population. So we tell him, listen, you probably have this amount of chances of finding this guy. Are you gonna, you know, lower your standards a bit? And they say no. And we tell them, well, you need to lower your standards or be okay with the fact that you're probably going to be this guy's second or third girlfriend and you might not be mm. a main. And then, you know, and we'll tell them this is the objective reality, what you're facing. And the other girls on the table say, no, girl, it's okay. Manifest it. So you watch it real time in 4K, them giving them terrible advice in the face of objective reality, the chance of finding this man, the screen's on there because we have a big screen and thing it says, Less than 1%. And, you know, we have a cat bag calculator. says, like, one out of five cat bags. All these girls are scoring five cat bags, mm -hmm. right? And the numbers are there. Staring them in the face. This guy is rare, and if you do find him, he's going to want multiple women. No, I'm going to find my Prince Charming that's going to be monogamous to me, blah, blah, blah. And then the other girls actually encourage it. So what we've realized is women reinforce this delusion amongst each other, and single women keep each other single. Mm -hmm. They don't tell each other what they need to hear, which is why the father figure and, you know, having a strong brother, uncles, and I think the father especially needs to be had because your dad will tell you how the world really works versus women give each other fantasies. Mm -hmm. Do you think in a woman's eyes that perfect man even exists? Because they're obviously looking for the the man to have like all these characteristics where he's like over six foot, making a certain amount of money, looks a certain ways, charming, funny, status, whatever. But like you said, the harsh reality is those men are probably not going to be loyal. Yeah. Some of them might be. Yeah. And I tell them all the time, can you find that man maybe? He'll be loyal to you and be a, a Chad and tall and good looking and in shape. Maybe, but the chances are very unlikely. Mm. And, and uh, you know, you're better off going off of 
probability versus possibility. And women tend to err on the side of possibility and hoping versus the probability, mm -hmm. right? See, and I've realized that this kind of comes, like men are forced to accept reality because if we don't perform, our reality reflects that. If you're a loser, you're fat, et cetera, people don't respect you, you don't get girls, you don't get dates, people make fun of you, you're ridiculed, you're bullied for it, which I think is actually good. You get negative reinforcement for your poor decisions. Women don't operate that way though. If a girl is mildly attractive, she could be delusional, stupid, not necessarily the most intelligent of person. She will still get positive reinforcement and told she's she's special, she's a princess, she deserves the world. All she has to do is go on Instagram and get that validation from a bunch of simps. And then on top of that, you know, why does a girl feel like she needs to self-improve or become better if all she gets is positive reinforcement for her, ina her ina and inadequacies? Mm -hmm. And that's kind of where we're at. So I think social media reinforces the delusion. I've seen girls, literally, I've because I like to go on the feminist Twitter sometimes to see the, op the other side. And I've seen girls make Tinder accounts when they feel bad or after a breakup uh, just to get a bunch of guys to swipe right on them feel better, and then they'll close it down. Like, girls use dating apps for validation. I talk about that in the yeah, book, you too. Yeah, you put some stats in saying that, yeah. that it goes from them being on Tinder or whatever it might be to actually getting down to the point where there is a successful date. It's like, it's what, like 1% or right? less than that. And, and, and girls go, and I think it's very important for men to understand that women use dating apps, right, and the internet uh, to meet men much differently than men use it to meet women. Men use it, I want to get a date. Women use it, okay, I can get a date, I can go on a free dinner, I can get free attention, I can get a guy to send me money. So women are able to use male attention to their advantage. And if a man doesn't understand this, he can get finessed and really get used and abused. Mm -hmm. And a lot of guys don't know this uncomfortable truth that women will use you if you allow them to. So it's upon you to not get finessed. What is your <laughs> feedback being so far from releasing this book? I was just curious to know. <laughs> I imagine a large percentage of the people who bought this have been men. Yeah. But has this ruffled some feathers? Of course, yeah. I mean, they. Uh, we were on uh, Mo Vlogs yesterday and his sister didn't like the title. But, but it, uh, <laughs> it's not, I don't think it's offensive though. Yeah. Like I think, obviously there's some parts which are probably going to piss off some women, but yeah. I think it's a lot of it is harsh truth. The, yeah. pro the problem is though, right? The book title itself is definitely controversial. But yeah. if you read the book, it's not that bad. Yeah. It tells you why and breaks it down. However, what's going to happen? Most girls are not going to read the book. He said that? How dare him? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's a problem. Yeah, because we live in a world nowadays where, quite frankly, we're told to kiss women's asses regardless of how they behave. And my thing is, I, I want guys to treat women accordingly. If she treats you poorly, sure, feel free to treat her poorly back or not give her any of your attention. You know, my thing is all about reciprocation. And the reality is, is that most women don't reciprocate, right, to men. And I want guys that if you're not getting that reciprocation of you're doing all this and she's doing nothing, fuck her, man. Kick her mm. to the curb. Uh, you mentioned in the book, you you say you must strike a balance that allows you to achieve your old contract desires while successfully navigating new contract realities. Yes. What does that mean? So what in the book, I talk about the old contract and a new contract. And in the old contract, it used to be, right, and this is the way the world has always worked, is men trade resources for sex, right, or sexual access, right? And then women, right, go ahead and give children if they want, right? Mm -hmm. But nowadays, it's the new contract is, I don't need no man, I'm strong and independent, you know, it, all this feminist propaganda BS. But the thing is, is that what women do is, is they kind of negotiate in bad faith. So they take parts of the old contract that benefit them while simultaneously getting rid of the duties that came with that contract. And guys are stupid enough to not understand this. So in other words, women expect you to be a traditional man and chivalrous at all times while well, they can pick and choose when they want to be a lady. <laughs> uh -huh. And that's not a good trade. Because if I'm going to be held to a standard, I'm supposed to protect and provide for you and be this dominant leader, well, I'm supposed to get some kind of authority with that because I'm responsible. But what women want is for you to have all the responsibility with zero authority. And Rolo Tomasi says it in the book, and I quote him as well, shout out to him, that authority without responsibility, or sorry, responsibility without authority is slavery. And that's where a lot of guys are, where they're taking care of a girl. They might be simp, and I'm sure you see it here mm -hmm. in Dubai where you got guys that have money that take care of these women, but they treat them like crap and they don't appreciate it. Now, is that all, all the time? No, of course. But 
you know, I tell guys all the time, like having money and status isn't enough. You need to have other things in play too. You have to have your frame on point. You have to have game. You have to understand how women operate psychologically. You need to be the full package. I never tell guys, oh yeah, just make money and you're going to get all the girls. No, you're going to become a rich simp and they're going to use you for that. Mm -hmm. So, but at the same time, I don't want you to be a brokey that's attractive that's in the gym and can't, uh, you know, maintain a girl long-term if you want a serious relationship. So you got to strike a balance and have it all. But yeah, basically... Girls dabble in both contracts and take and pick and choose what they want. And I'm telling guys like, no, it's one or the other. You mm -hmm. want to be strong and independent? Cool. You're only going to get sex and nothing else. Yeah. Speaking of simps, you mentioned that there is a, there's an army of simps in today's society. Yeah. How the hell do we fix that problem? <laughs> because I think this is why women's have, they have such inflated egos and so much choice. They just get yeah. flattered every single day by all these offers, which they're getting. And the majority of these people are men who are just simping. Yeah, dude. So how, what I've noticed is like, if you try and tell a simp to stop being a simp, he's not going to listen because <laughs> they're, they're not thinking properly. Mm -hmm. Like even back in the day when I was in my early twenties, like, I'm not going to lie. Like I was, I had some, we all have been simp. there, bro. I've simped before. We yeah. all have, like, I think, and I think that's why it's so important because you have to be there to know what it feels like yeah. so you can be able to properly dispense advice to someone that is mm -hmm. there. But the problem is this. Let's let's be honest here. We know men are hard-hearted. They got to take the L for them to finally come to realization like, what was I doing? Mm -hmm. You know, because every guy has this kind of ego thing where they think, no, my methodology of getting girls is the best, whether they're paying for escorts, they're tricking on OnlyFans or whatever it is. They think this is the best way to do it because they're so ego invested and they spent their time, their money, their resources, whatever it may be, into pursuing women in that avenue. It's not until they take a massive L and they get some serious heartbreak that mm -hmm. they come to this side of the internet and realize, wow, everything I've been told is a lie. Because we tell men all the time to prop women up, pedestalize them. That's how you get them, be a nice guy. And those days are done. They used to work maybe 50, 60 years ago, right? When being a gentleman would work. But nowadays you have to pick and choose which girls to be a gentleman with. But like simping? Yeah. Bro, it's only going to get worse, I think. Because I mean, usually, right, what happens is a guy will find a girl, a hot to him, attractive. And he'll put all the effort behind her. Pick her up, put her on a pedestal, give us all to her, right? She may like that at the beginning, but she gets bored. You know, they get married, have kids, whatever. She's like, you know what? This guy is boring. I'm tired of him. I'm going to leave. Mm -hmm. And she divorces him. His half his stuff moves on. But the guy is left with nothing now and half his money, if if at all. He's like, damn, what do I do? And he's like, you know what? I need answers. Goes online. Go to YouTube. Find our content. Roll up to Masi. And then, damn, here's where I messed up. But, but most guys, they're like, you know what? Until that point, they don't ever look for answers. So that's that's the thing that happens all the time. Mm. So it's yeah, part of life. As far as like simping, dude, I, I honestly predict that it's going to get Worse. Worse before it gets better. Yeah. Like, it's great because this type of content, right? Like, Andrew's done a fantastic job of, like, letting guys understand that, you know, you do have value as a man. You just need to work and earn it. Yeah. And then women will respect you for it. But we're, it's still a minority. Like, most guys are simps. It's just mm. crazy. You know, there, a lot of guys are in a sexless relationship, sexless marriage. They're with a girl that doesn't respect them. They're with a girl that likes to go to the club and, you know, have a bunch of guys DM them and get attention. And, you know, once guys wake up and realize like this is unacceptable behavior on a worldwide scale, then women, women will start to act right. But, you know, women aren't going to change until guys become better and let girls know that this is an acceptable behavior. Mm. I look at it as like a, a religion, right? So for example, let's say I'm Christian. I want you to be Christian. If I just tell you, oh, come to my church, read, my, read the Bible, you're like, bro, for what? However, if you come across a problem and have a solution, but live my lifestyle, you're like, damn, he lives good, he's happy, why am I not happy? You know what? Yo, Mike, how do you do what you do? Hey, man, if you want, come to, come, come to church with me. Same thing with, with simping. You know what? I'm simping right now, but I'm losing money. I feel bad. I don't feel good. You know, Mike has a good lifestyle. He has girls around him all the time. You know what? Mike, how do I get help from you? Mm -hmm. So then they ask you, and he's, that's when you give it to him. We can't have somebody that doesn't want to be helped. So I think for me personally, I learned my biggest lessons from just getting heartbroken mm -hmm. and going through the experience of being a simp and then literally being treated like trash and then realizing, oh, okay, I understand what mistakes which I made. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I mean, people, people can try as much as possible to try and learn from the mistakes that other people have made. But I think nothing is more hard hitting than actually experiencing it yeah. yourself. Yeah. yeah. Women are fantastic creatures in the fact that they operate on respect. And what I mean by that is a woman can't love you truly and get you can't get the best out of a woman uh, with her love unless she really respects, respects you. you. And the problem that guys don't understand is that 
that respect is earned through a bunch of different avenues, right? You got to have your physicality on point. She needs to know that you can actually protect her. You're stronger than her. Uh, you need to be competent. You need to know more than she does. You need to be smarter than her in almost every regard. You need to make more money, money, th more money than her. Like women don't look for an equal, even though mainstream society says, oh, I want an equal partnership. No, you don't. You want a man superior to in every single way. If you look at Fifty Shades of Grey, which is one of the most popular books, Women want a guy that's better than them in every regard, every metric. So what I'm telling guys is become that guy and then you, what, right? Because you've created excellence and you're still demanding more excellence upon yourself. Then you could bring the girl into your life and demand excellence from her. Mm. But you need to, I look at it like I use a Pokemon analogy, right? Um, you know, if you don't have enough badges, right? You couldn't control a certain type of Pokemon, right? You, it was like uh, maybe a level 50 Charizard. You only got three badges though. You're not going to be able to control them because you haven't beaten enough gym leaders. I tell guys all the time, that's kind of what it is. You need to have enough Pokemon badges and beat the Elite Four to get the most attractive girls because they have a bunch of people that want to get them. And for you to be able to command that respect from them, you need to be on point first. Women look for leaders, but the big thing is you need to be able to lead by example. And for her to respect you, she has to feel like she can submit to you and you're the leader. But the problem is that guys want girls that are going to be submissive, but they don't have their life together. Now, they may still test you, even though you're a high value guy, but yeah. at the same time, they'll listen because they, they respect you. So it comes with the, the you know, that, that type of like setup. But like, regardless of the facts, if you're that guy that she wants to be with, you tell her, hey, you know what? I don't like that. You know what? This man's my dream, man. I'm going to listen to what, what he has to say. Mm -hmm. And that comes back. And I say all that to bring it full circle to the simping. The reason why a girl can't respect a simp is because a simp pedestalizes her. Yeah. And women know that they need a man who's superior to them. If you're simping on her and pedestalizing her, she automatically infers that she's better than you. And I tell guys, you know, all the feminists can get mad at me, whatever. You got to be better than your girl mm -hmm. in every regard. You have to be superior to her. And not only that, you need to have other women. Oh my God, that's so controversial. No, because women only act right when they know they can be replaced. Here's two ways you can know if someone's a real simp. For example, this is what we've seen over a period of time is they can't say no to the girl and they can't walk away. Mm -hmm. Those two things are hard, hard plays. If you can't do those two things, you're just kind of like, yo, what's, what's up with you? So, yeah. So I, I and, and people, you know, and I agree with Andrew on this all as well, because, you know, he's always been big on like having multiple girls and everything. But I've noticed I get the best treatment from women when they know that I have another girl and they could be replaced at any yeah. time because what happens is, and this is human nature in general, whenever you start to get comfortable, you start to slack off a bit, like I got my position, I'm locked in, etc. Like with girls, you need another woman there to keep the other girl on her toes because when a girl starts getting comfortable, that's a lot of time when disrespect happens. I tell guys all the time, listen to the song, Future, you know, bitch don't get too comfortable. You know, it's like a fat, funny, catchy line, but, you know, drill it into people, guys' heads that when a woman gets comfortable, that's when the disrespect comes. That's when she do, does, you know, wants to maybe go out with the girls or she wants to dress more provocatively when she's not around you. She wants to put pictures of her ass all over the place. She's starting to subtly screen for a better guy than you. And see, if a man isn't aware of this, he's not going to know because a lot of guys think men and women are equal. So unless she's at the mall, cold approaching guys, they're going to assume, oh no, she's still loyal to me. No, dummy. Like girls move differently when it when they're looking for a mate. They can't overtly go ahead and go up to a guy and be like, you're handsome. I'd love to talk to you. No, most of the time they do it covertly, whether it's them going to the club with their friends or the guys under the guise of a girl's night out or it's them Instagram, you, being on Instagram, friends. putting pictures of themselves, DMing, whatever it may be. Like girls are much sneakier when it comes to infidelity and doing things, but you might not even catch it as a guy. And actually, as a matter of fact, the way a woman treats her guy in public or the way she puts herself out to the public, right, tells you a lot about the man's masculinity. Mm. Typically, when the girl really respects her man, you see that she's quiet, she's docile, she doesn't have that big of an internet profile unless the guy wants her to. Everything she does is typically under his authority. But when she doesn't care, she talks of any which way, blah, blah, blah. And that's when you know the guy is, is messed up. A woman is typically is a mirror image of her man's masculinity. Yeah. The public disrespect is the worst thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's bad. And the crazy part is like, women don't want to be with a guy that they can disrespect like that. They want a guy, as, as controversial as this may sound, they want a guy that can look him dead in the eye and say, shut the fuck up. Mm -hmm. Who are you talking to? Yo, Get out my house. And I've done that to girls and they come back different. Like, or I've had it before where, you know, she'll act crazy. I'm like, get out of my house. I'll call another chick right in front of her and let her know. And people say, oh my God, that's so evil. That's so bad. But that's what you have to do with women a lot of times because we live in this crazy gynocentric society where women think it's acceptable to disrespect men openly sometimes. And you have to constantly let them know, punish bad behavior. That's why we got Favre out the first time. You got to frank house these hoes sometimes. You got to let them know this wasn't acceptable. Obviously, you never do it physically. Of course not. You do it through your actions of replacing her. 
The only power you have as a man in 2023 and beyond is you got to be able to walk away from a girl if she disrespects you. Mm -hmm. And that's when she realizes, damn, this guy really will walk away from me and get another and, and get another girl at that. That might be cuter than me. Bam. That's when it, they turn around and they say, I need to readjust my behavior because women rarely ever get put in an uncomfortable position like that where they can be replaced. Most guys are, the girl will do some fucked up shit and he'll sit there, please take me back. And he didn't even do nothing. It was her. <laughs> but she'll go ahead and gaslight and make him feel bad and you can't play that game. It's like, oh, it, you want to be like that? Cool. Get the fuck out of my house. And that's what I'm going to act right. Got to walk away. Do you, uh, do you like being in a relationship with a woman who is going to call you out on some of your bullshit sometimes and challenge you? Or do you prefer to be with a woman who is going to be more submissive and will just say yes to everything? She, she every must be submissive because the world already challenges me. I don't need my really? girl to do that. Like if she, if you know, because the thing is, I never put unreasonable expectations on any of my girls. Mm. Typically it's, hey, can you do this for me? It's small stuff, right? I need you to help me maybe with my business, clean the apartment up, whatever. It's nothing, it's never anything uh, hard. So if they give me any back talk or give me a hard time, blah, blah, blah about that, I know, okay, I'm, <laughs> it depends. If she's just a chick that I'm just like smashing, I don't care. Who cares? Mm. But if it's like, uh, like a main chick, whatever, they know better. They, they already get stuff situated, whatever. Um, if my friends come by, they serve them, like all this stuff. And I think that's very important because you want your girl to be an asset. And when she goes out, she represents you. So I, I don't want, I can't have her going out acting crazy because that embarrasses me. So, but no, as far as like her trying to challenge me or whatever, like no woman's going to challenge me because the world already challenges me. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I challenge myself. I don't need a woman to do that. That's not her job. You know, my job as the man is to be the masculine authority and going out there and becoming better, et cetera. I'm already self-motivated. I don't need her to come in. Matter of fact, if a woman motivates you, you fucked up. <laughs> like, you know, no woman should ever be coming because women are inherently you want, lazy. You want a woman to support you, though. Support me to become better. Yeah. But she's never going to be like my motivation. Like, oh, I need motivation for my girl. Like, yeah, I already yeah, lost yeah. it. That's the point. Yeah. And the reason why, controversial take, women are inherently lazy. I talk about this in the book. Like, all human beings are lazy. But women have a higher proclivity to be lazy. And what I mean by that is lazy when it comes to creating resources. Right? Women are here to create children, not create excess resources. The man's job is to create excess resources for a family. That's why when a man makes money, he says, oh, wow, this is awesome. Like a family can be dependent upon me. That's why we go out and build and create the you know beautiful world that we have now. Women, on the other hand, when they make money, what do they say? I'm independent of who? A man. So they don't want to create excess resources. They do it because they have to a lot of the times. And if you look at every metric, men dominate all the work fields that make the most money, that are hard labor, that are difficult to do, uh, that are based in science, engineering, technology, and math. Whereas women dominate all the fields that are more, you know, human, like people to people type contact stuff, like sociology, hairdresser, et cetera. A lot of useless jobs, to be honest. They don't create the infrastructure of the world. And most women would prefer to be home with a man, but the problem is that they can't do it because things are expensive now. We can talk about feminism, how it's kind of messed up and increased the labor force, which is decreased wages and inflation, et cetera. But to make a long story short, women on average work less hours. They work less hard jobs. They don't go into career fields that pay the most. They're more interested in like, you know, being involved with people versus being involved with things, which being involved with things tend to pay more. They don't want to take dangerous jobs. They don't want to work hard hours. So there's a multitude of reasons why men make more money, but it boils down to women are lazier when it comes to creating resources. So my thing is, how are you going to rely on someone, right? Or a being that is inherently lazy when it comes to creating resources as your motivation as a man? That's terrible. That motivation has got to come from within. It's got to be intrinsic to you, not to a woman. Because let's say you lose that girl. What are you going to do now? Oh my God, I can't work because I lost my girl. That's terrible. And you're definitely not going to be able to attract another one. Women are uh, admire men that are self-driven and ambitious without them. Like a girl wants to be, no woman will ever admit this, but she wants a guy that's going to be successful with her without her. She just comes in as a compliment. Mm -hmm. So this this ideal woman, which you would be looking for, yeah. is more on the submissive side. Yeah. I have a few. I, I would imagine. <laughs> uh, I got a few of them working. Is that pretty hard to find in Miami? Yeah, yeah. very, very, dude. It's it's very difficult. Because yeah. I've, I've, I've noticed here in Dubai, the, the good thing about Dubai is there's a, there's a good selection of many, many different nationalities. Yeah. So it's interesting. Yeah. You get all their cultural backgrounds and their approach to men. Uh, you know, I've noticed a big difference between Russian women, Eastern European women, English women, Spanish, like everything. It's really interesting. But I really honestly don't have much experience dating American women. Mm -hmm. And I honestly would say I, probably, I, that I don't really have, from what I've heard, yeah. experienced a little bit, like I don't really have any interest in 
diving into that too much. Yeah. I've met, I've met some cool American girls, but a lot of them, particularly the younger generation, like they've, they've been brought up with all the wrong morals. <laughs> we were just talking about that earlier. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> so, yeah, man. So, uh, basically, you got to train your girl nowadays, bro, especially in America. <laughs> and more often than not, she comes up with a lot of baggage in terms of like TikTok videos, what she's been hearing from her friends, you know, that are slutty as hell. And it's kind of like, if you find a girl like, like that, you have to literally go back in time and say, you know what? All right, these past couple 18, 20 years, you've been brainwashed to believe this bullshit. So now to say, you know what? Cool. As a man, take my time and energy to train you in the more, I want to say, tr traditional ways. And it could be easy, it could be hard. But my thing is like, having to train somebody to actually be a woman is crazy, bro. And American women, bro, are notorious for being like legit, I don't want to say the word. Hard work. <laughs> Hard work and hoes. I'll, I'll, I'll say this because like when we say that, right, girls get so triggered when we're on the podcast. We're like, yeah, you got to train women. And they're like, oh my God. And then I'll say, okay, well, let me ask you a question. If you want to build the body of your dreams, where do you go? To the gym. What do you do there? Oh, I train. Okay. If you're competing for a sport, what do you do? Oh, I train. Uh, if you have a marathon you're going to prepare for, what do you do? Oh, you train. Oh, so you're telling me that you're willing to sit there and train to get a better body, to maybe for a, train for a job, et cetera, but you won't train for your man. Mm. And then that's when it really hits home. A girl, right? Western women a lot of the time, they'll go to college, right? They'll wear, uh, you know, a suit and dress, you know, conservatively for a job, right? They'll go to that job. They'll serve the boss. They'll do what they say, et cetera. Then come home to you and you'll say, can you make me a sandwich? They'll say, do it yourself. And I think that's ludicrous because they will give their best years to a company that doesn't give a fuck about them over a man who will provide, protect, and provide uh, and provision for her, mm. right? And give her children. And that's the day and age that we're in now. So what I would say is, right, because this part of the world is different because the women have a father. They come from a nuclear family. Yeah. They have some semblance of healthy masculinity. But in the United States, where we have a fatherless generation, right, you have a bunch of women that don't respect masculinity in general. Hell, most women, I, and I love to ask this question a lot of times, on the podcast, do you think most women respect most men? And the answer is almost no, always no, yeah. they don't. And I think that's very scary because men built the world, but most women don't respect those very men. So what I tell guys is since women come with this poisonous mind, especially these Gen Zers, these younger women that grew up on iPads and TikTok and all this other stuff, like you have to almost deprogram the fuckery out of them and tell mm. them, this is how the world really works. No, you're not a princess. You're going to follow me. This is how it is. I will treat you like a princess if it's earned, yeah. but I'm not going to go ahead and treat you like a princess just because you have to earn no it. No man is going to want them in a relationship. Yeah. You know, and you have to make them, you almost have to make them more ladylike and be, turn them into an asset because most girls come in, right, in the United States especially, they come in and they think, what can I get out of this? What can what can this guy do for me versus what yeah. can I do for this man? They're extractors. And your job as the man is to bring that girl in, right, turn her from an extractor, right, and a liability into an asset. Now, a lot of guys don't have this skill set, which is why I'm so big on like you have to get yourself to a certain point because then you could demand that excellence from the girl back in reciprocation. But yeah, you definitely have to teach girls in the West how to be a good girlfriend for you because a lot of them come with bad habits. They want to do girls' nights out. They want to dress like hoes. They want to act like hoes. They want to twerk in public. They want to um, have guy friends. They want to be able to do certain behaviors and actions that might put the relationship at risk. And your job as the man is to protect her from herself a lot of the times and not put herself in compromising situations yeah. that might hurt the relationship. But a lot of girls think that it's okay to behave in certain ways even when they have a man. And your job as the man is to let her know, no, this is not how it goes. Just like you want to work for that job and there's rules and regulations, same here. You want a relationship with me. That comes with rules and regulations and boundaries. And your job as the man is to be able to enforce those boundaries. How do you enforce it? Never physically. Always, I will leave you. You will go back to the fucking streets. This is how it is. Yeah, I think I think one of the problems is there's just a lack of good female role models. That too. Yeah, the music, what they see on TikTok. Yo, TikTok is poison, bro. I don't know if you... You ever seen what those reels go up and down? Like, for example, short video, girls talking about, oh yeah, men are this, men are that. And they believe that stuff, right? And what happens is it comes into their real life. So remember, I mentioned earlier in the show, right? It said, most women don't know what men want. Mm -hmm. So their teacher is TikTok. Cardi B. Cardi B, all this music. Now here's the problem, right? If you're a guy of means, a guy of value shit like that, you're never going to take it serious. But once again, they don't know what men want. Oh, he's tall, successful, in the gym, good looking. I want him. But they don't want to keep men in, in, in the whole um, setup. So my thing is like, okay, at what point do they say, you know what? I'm feeling all the time. I'm just smashing these guys. Nothing's happening. 
but they don't really learn, bro, until it's too late and they're really old. Mm, Here's the other interesting thing, too. Uh, the female role models in the West are very bad. You got Cardi B, <coughs> Cardi B, Kim Kardashian, Meg Thee Stallion, um, Meg Thee Stallion City Girls, um, people like Lana Rhodes, these girls from like, yeah. you know, uh, what's what's that podcast? To, to, um, Emma, uh, Emma Ajowski's doing her own podcast as well. I saw a few clips of that and I was like... Oh, call dear. her daddy? Yeah, call her daddy, yeah. yeah. The, 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 that's the girl that did the thing with Mia Khalifa, right? Mm-hmm. If I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like you got all these girls, right, that are like telling women a bunch of bullshit, right? And here's the funny part. These girls, these strong, independent women, essentially become the man that they wanted in the first place. Ooh. They become a boss, babe. They make this money. They become successful. They're su- they have. And what women don't understand is when you become a boss, babe, and you make money and you become successful, what ends up happening is you take on masculine tendencies. You take on masculine traits. And guess what happens when you meet a guy that's actually masculine that meets a masculine woman? Clash. Yeah, it's a clash. And not only that. A guy like me, if I meet a chick that's like a boss babe or whatever, I put her in the sex only category. And here's the scary part. She'll never know it. I'll fuck with her. I'll talk with her, blah, blah, blah. It is what it is. But a lot of the time she doesn't know that she's been pretty much disqualified from being a serious girlfriend from the beginning because she has tendencies that aren't attractive to me. Mm. But the problem is that so many women think acting like a guy, chasing a career, being masculine, being dominant, being competitive. Let me challenge you. All this fuck shit is attractive. It's not. Yeah. And I tell girls all the time on the podcast, all right, so you think it's attractive for you to be a boss, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, it is. Okay, well, you know what? How about this? How about on Saturday nights, I wear heels and I wear a dress. Would you go out with me? <laughs> Ew, no. Fantastic. That's exactly how men feel when you talk about you being a boss, babe, and competitive. Oh my God. No, it's not. It is the same because a masculine woman is just like a feminine man. But here's the craziness. Women expect you, right, to be masculine, right? And they can pick and choose when they want to be feminine. And you're supposed to accept them no matter what. But if I act feminine, right, maybe on a Saturday, they would never accept me. So what men want is considered discrimination. What women want is considered standards. Mm. If I say men don't like masculine women, oh, you're just insecure. No, it's annoying. Just like me wearing heels would be weird to you. Would, would I like look at the lun- like the lunacy of like when you challenge female logic, it, it never makes sense. If I told a girl, okay, well, I want to wear makeup and heels on Saturday, right? And and she said, ew, no, don't do that. Like I'd prefer if you when you wore your suit and your sports coat and went out. Like, and I said, Oh, no, that's because you're insecure. She would look at me like I'm crazy if I said that, right? Because what do you mean? I'm in, you're, you know, you're insecure. She'd be like, what do you mean I'm insecure? No, you're just not acting like a, like a man. Okay. So how am I insecure for saying like, I don't want you acting like a dude and being all masculine. Oh no, you're insecure. No, it's annoying. Mm. Just like you'd be annoyed by me dressing like a girl. But when you put female logic to the test like that, it never works. And that's when they finally hit the Eureka, like, okay, I see where you're coming from now. I don't like it, but I understand. And you have to put women in your position for them to understand because they're solipsistic creatures. Like a lot of girls think the world revolves around them is as terrible as that sound, sounds to say, but they have to be that. It's actually naturally within them to be that way so that they can care for their children better. They have to worry about themselves over a man. Mike, imagine a girl, right? Let's say that you might know who you went to school with. She's never had a real man in her life up until now, right? And you're 30... 32. 32, right? So 32 years on this earth, right? I'm, I'm the real man in her life. The first real man. Yeah. First, first real man, right? So she dated all these simps, these, these loser guys, and it's like, damn... She was always the one leading that, you know, dynamic. So now you're like, okay, cool. I'm here. What's good? And bottom line is, right, she's doing things that she's not aware of how you feel. It's like, oh, I'm used to doing this, but you're not going to tolerate that. Mm-hmm. So what happens is you say, yo, I'm not going to lie. I don't like that. And she may be like, why? She yeah, doesn't she, understand. She's so used to. Exactly. So it's, 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 it's scary, but it's also like, okay, if you care about her or you want to help her, you can try to teach her how to really act. But mm. it's so many years of programming, bro. It's tough. It's fucked. I've had that experience before yeah. where a girl had been in her previous relationships and literally she's been with simps <laughs> and then she's with me and then she's shocked by the dynamic of the relationship and how I behave. Uh, and I'm like, this is the way it's going to be. Like, yeah. I'm not going to change. Yeah. And if you don't like it, like, I'm not going to try and change you. I think it's better. You just, yep. you just leave. And then it's amazing. A lot of times they acquiesce to you by doing that. Yes. Mm-hmm. Because it's so rare for a man to stand on his principle and say, this is not, I'm not going to follow you. You follow me. And women naturally want to be followers. Just that they'll test you sometimes. And um, it's just crazy, bro. It really is. And like, it's a lot of the times, like you might be the first guy, right? That actually has some semblance of masculinity. And they'll be like shocked and surprised by that. Because she'll go 25 years of never getting checked. And then you come in. 
poem. She's like, whoa, this guy tells me no. This is weird. <laughs> yeah. And they, you know? they, they, they hate no. it. Well, yeah. they love it. Yeah. Yeah. And it's funny because you say no in 30 years plus is like, damn, who is this guy? Mm -hmm. But then, like, you know what? Damn, he's worth it. I'm going to change or try yeah. to change. So. So, I like I like this quote which you uh, you put in the book. Most women want to get married and have children. Very few want to be wives and mothers. Ooh. Yeah. So fantastic. Uh, That's uh, it. Was Aaron Clary? Aaron Clary. Yeah. Aaron Clary. Yeah. Shout yeah. To him. I quoted him, and he edited my book and helped me write it. Uh, shout out to him. He's a great guy. Um, so yeah, that comes from his book, uh, and that's very true. And you know, I got a funny story about this. We had a girl come on the show a couple weeks back, and she had been engaged to her guy, and she was like insistent on like this 200,000 plus, well, like quarter million dollar quarter wedding. Million wedding, yeah. And I was like, why do you care about, you know, a wedding so much when you've been with this guy for so long, blah, blah, blah. She's like, I want a big wedding. I want a big wedding. And I was like, in my head, like red flag, red flag, red what flag. What does he want? Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, what does he want? She was like, yeah, well, he doesn't mind something a little bit lower class, like, you know, not lower class, excuse me, lower key. Mm -hmm. And I was like, why not just go with that? Like, why do you need to have this big spectacle of a, of a wedding? She's like, I just want it. And I was like, that's, and I want to be a bridezilla. And that's when it hit me. Hmm. Like, a lot of girls want to get married. They don't necessarily want to be wives, you know, because it's a cool thing. It's like a thing to flex. Just check it off. It's a check. And then also like a lot, of, what I've also noticed, like what, and Instagram is like really highlighted this. Women like to compare their lives to other chicks. Like, oh, I got the most lit life. Look at these, all these experiences I have, blah, blah, blah. They won't show the guy that's paying for it, of course, mm. right? Unless it's their boyfriend. But if they do have a boyfriend, they'll want to be able to have a boyfriend. Because this, here's the thing that that people don't want to admit. When women meet each other, right? When men meet each other, you shake hands and say, what do you do for a living? Cool, you do that, I do this, etc." Men talk about things. When women meet, they hug and kiss. Oh, do you have a boyfriend? Are you in a relationship? <laughs> like women don't lead with their careers a lot of yeah. times when they talk amongst each other, right? They might talk about it like, I do this and do that. But then they'll say, okay, do you have a boyfriend? And then that will be the predominant, you know, figure in the conversation. But a girl understands that her value is derived from not her career, rather the caliber of man that she can attract. Mm -hmm. So if she's with a winner, she'll want to show that off. And girl, it's a constant flex to, look, I'm with this guy or I'm married to this guy. And that's why girls want to get married so bad a lot of times because number one, they're able to brag about that security. They got a ring. They got some kind of commitment. Also, what caliber of man can you attract and retain in a marriage? And that, and what kind of caliber of wedding can you throw? Because that says a lot about your status. Mm -hmm. And that's what this girl's chasing. She's not trying to necessarily be a wife. She wants to be able to flex. Look at how expensive my wedding was. Look at how cool it was. I'm married. Woo. Like, you know, it's like a, a wedding is like a female orgasm because the entire day is around her and she's getting the ultimate validation of a marriage and she's getting all the attention from everyone that she's known throughout her life. Yeah, ultimately for a woman, her being married and posting every on social media is the ultimate prize because it's a competition. Imagine all the girls in school like, oh, well, I want to be a wife, I want to be this and that. The moment that they actually get a chance to be and they can put it online, bro, ultimate validation from everybody because now I have the best prize of all, I'm married, you're not. Mm -hmm. Crazy, bro. I assume that Marriage isn't on uh, the priority. Hell no. <laughs> yeah. So here's the thing. The nuclear family is the backbone of any stable society. I think it's needed. You need two parents, right? Children and a dog. But the thing is, is that in the West, the United States, the United Kingdom, pretty much any first world uh, English speaking or westernized country, marriage is typically off the table because you involve the state. I'm all for guys getting married without the state involved. You want to get married yeah, yeah. Islamically in a mosque, in a church, in a synagogue. You just do it with you two, some close family. Hell, even if you want to have a, a wedding. But I don't want anyone signing paperwork where the government can now come in because what happens is once the government's involved, that woman is now incentivized to leave you. Yeah. This is why 80% of divorces are initiated by women because they have a huge incentive to do so because they get 90% of the alimony. It's their favorite. Yeah, they get, the, they get the house, they get the marital home, they get the children, everything, and they can use that against you. So my thing is I tell guys, and she could leave at any time. You could walk into your house, she's sucking some dude's dick, and she could hand you divorce paperwork, and you can't do anything about it. Yep. So, and this might sound terrible to say it, but once again, the man always needs to have the leverage in the relationship. And the reason why I say the man needs to have the leverage in the relationship is because typically when men are in leadership roles and have leverage with their girl, they tend to act better than women do. When women have leverage, they can destroy your life. With a man, at least there's checks and balances. If the guy marries a girl, right, he's more than likely not going to divorce her. Men rarely initiate breakups and or divorces because if he loves that girl, even if he goes and has sex with another chick, 
his main girl is his main girl. It is what it is, mm-hmm. right? And if anything, I've had it before where I've went and hooked up with some chick. I'm like, damn, this bimbo is useless. And I want to be with my main girl even more. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, you'll be like, God damn. Yeah. So, so if anything, like when a guy goes out and exercises options, it makes him appreciate what he has. When women go out and exercise options, it's a wrap. It's over. Yeah. You know what I mean? Men and women are not the same when it comes to sex, which girls get mad at me about this all the time. But it's one of the few things that men get the benefit is, uh, or the privilege that we get is being able to be promiscuous without judgment. But that privilege comes, we have to earn it. Men can't be promiscuous and be losers like girls can. A girl could wake up and literally be on a boat with future the next day. She could be hanging out with future with no future. You, on the other hand, as a man, right? You got to have your shit together and have a future to even be able to get a girl. You have to be, have some semblance of competence to get a woman. It's not the same way. So that's why male promiscuity is not, you know, as uh, disgusting, I guess, as female promiscuity, because for women, it's easy. For men, it's hard. People only respect what's difficult. Mm -hmm. Do you think if there's going to be less marriages, which seems to be the trend moving forwards, do you think people are going to have less kids? Yeah, we we already know the birth rate is at its lowest and we're already like below, I think you're supposed to have um, two kids per family. We're way below that in the West in general. Yeah. We have some of the lowest birth rates. You think that's a problem? Yeah. Yeah. Because whenever you have low birth rates, it, it can lead to economic collapse. Because you're not going to have enough people coming into the workforce, right, to create economic stimuli. Mm-hmm. And that's all the Western world have, you know, really low birth rates, historically low birth rates. So, so say for example, you, you're encouraging a lot of guys to move towards that top 10% and that top 1%. Yeah. yeah. But when they reach that position, do you think they start to have some of the characteristics and traits of some of the women which you've described in the book? Such as? Such as they they have so many options, they start to actually start treating women not as nice. That's a good question. They're discarding a lot of them. They're ghosting them. They're doing all, all like there was a full page where you were talking about all the bad things which women are doing to guys. Yeah. But if you then become that one one percent, yeah, then it's really easy for you to start treating women like trash. So do you think there are some negative side effects of that? I, I that that's definitely you know that's a really good point. I didn't think about that, but I, I think, will tell you this. Oh, go ahead. I think for a guy, right? If he is, he knows the game. He knows the landscape. He's getting girls. He knows what's good and what's bad. If a girl's actually worth the value and she's actually who she says she is, she's loyal, trustworthy, um, and she's valuable to him as an asset, he's not going to get rid of her and dump her. He's going to keep her around. You know what? She's, she deserves the title of wifey. However, for a girl, the guy might be uh, good to her, treat her very nice, be there for her, but eh, you're not my ideal guy. I just walk away. So I think for a guy, even in that scenario... It's different because he'll actually say, you know what? She's worth the value. I'm going to keep her around. Versus a girl, eh, you're good for now and then. I'm out. Yeah, I was going to say, um, to, to add to his point, is that, though, that uh, that's a good point because that you brought I, up. Like, guys yeah, can yeah. be yeah. negative I, like I, that. I, too. I see what he's saying. I, yeah. I've experienced it. Yeah. My value's gone up. Yeah. I have, without a doubt, like, I've in the past, I've treated women pretty poorly. Yeah. And... I think I'd, I'd, it's one of those things. I think what I've come to terms with is I just have to be more honest with women. Yeah. Not necessarily change my behavior. I could do if I wanted to. Mm-hmm. But I think if I just set things straight right at the beginning and say, this is how it is, then less women get hurt. Now, I'm glad you mentioned that. I'm real Because big. I, I don't want to create this environment where I'm treating women like trash. Yeah. yeah. And then if they get treated like trash, then they're going to start treating men like trash. And they're the reasons why they're thinking all oh, men are dickheads because they're just getting experience from all these top one set men so who are treating them like you trash. asked a really good question i'm going to tie everything together what he said and what you said so this is why i'm real big on guys tell, being honest with girls hmm. now most guys aren't but i tell guys yo tell them i'm gonna have multiple women i'm not gonna be monogamous etc right like tell them so they can make the conscious decision to still mess with you or not right because at that point then it's on them you can't complain and cry about heartbreak if you know that i'm not gonna be monogamous with you right that's number one being honest number two as far as like guys that are in the top one percent treating girls poorly or guys that are in the top echelon treating women poorly going back to what he said as you date and deal with more women you're going to be a very good judge and ass- ass- assessor of character when it comes to women because when you deal with bimbos let's be honest here we all know the typical girl she'll come in and she'll be useless whatever you'll have sex with her never take her seriously but when a girl does come in and she adds value it's kind of a novelty because most girls don't Mm -hmm. so you'll be able to identify those girls really quickly and then it's upon you to be able to decide if you want to elevate that girl or not but my biggest thing is i'd rather the men have the power versus the women because at least i know when the man has the power he earned the right 
and the and the ability and the privilege to have that power. Women, when they get that power, they never earned it. They were born with it. Mm -hmm. so you say in the book that women don't deserve preferential treatment, but in what circumstances do they? If Would they you add say value if they're adding life. value? Yeah. yeah. If they See, add value to your life and they're an asset versus a liability, then that's when you elevate that girl and she gets per certain perks and privileges. Like right now, right? I have a girl with me right now here in Dubai. And I brought her with her, me. Brought her. I brought her with me, but she's fantastic. She makes life easier. She's, you know, helping us with our logistics of everything, the travel. Um, <clears throat> when I bring her out and et cetera, she's a compliment. She's always very quiet, very feminine, helps out. Uh, and, you know, that's just kind of, that's one of the benefits of, hey, you behave a certain way, like I'm going to definitely bring you along with me, right? And those are the girls that you treat well. The girls that treat you well, you treat them back. I'm real big on reciprocation. I'm not saying treat women poorly, but you got to be able to identify the girls that do deserve it versus the girls that don't. And my argument is that most girls simply don't deserve it. Mm -hmm. But I guarantee you, Mike, back then when you were doing, you know, your stuff, whatever, if you met a girl that was irreplaceable, like she was making coffee in the morning, helping you with your, your videos, helping you with camera work, it's like, you know what? Damn. I'm having fun, but Shorty's like different. You would say, you know what? I'm gonna keep her around. Versus a girl's like, eh, I could find Jerry down the street. Tom is cool, but like, I'm, I'm getting flown out to Dubai. Feel Men me? don't punish. Yeah. Women punish nice guys. Yeah. Men don't punish nice girls yeah. mm -hmm. to the same degree that women punish nice guys. Because when a woman comes in and she's nice and she's feminine and docile and like really friendly and good to be around and gives you that, that, uh, that type of energy, men really appreciate that because they don't get it often, mm -hmm. right? But women, on the other hand, get it all the time, so they resent it. So women punish nice guys. So you that's why you can't be a nice guy. Yeah. But as a girl, when she comes in and she's like a good woman and she's nice and everything like that, men tend to appreciate that a lot more. And since guys are way easier to please, right? If a girl comes in and she does a few of the things I mentioned, she's going to be heads and shoulders above most women. She's going to be able to stand out. And then the guy, a lot of times, will elevate her or, or at least keep her around so that she can continue to prove herself so that when he is ready to settle down, this is going to be the main. Have you, have you ever ended a relationship and regretted it? Thinking like, oh shit, she was, she was a real one. Because I've had an experience with, there's a couple, I look back and I think, damn, it would be nice to see an well, alternate it universe and seeing how my life would have turned out. Yeah. Because she was she, like so loyal, like 100% supportive and just added so much value to my life. And I think, hmm. Get her back, bro. No, but I'm, I'm with a couple of them who are doing the same thing. Oh, okay. That's the then problem. you're good. Then yeah. Never like she, yeah. It's weird to think like, what if? Yeah. Do you, have you ever had that? I've never had a what if. Um, cause every time I cut it with a girl, I'm just like, no, nah, this, this, I'm, I'm good. Like the, basically I look at it from a logical standpoint, is this girl adding more value than she's causing damage? And if the answer is she's being more of a liability now, even if she had a value in the past, I get rid of her mm -hmm. regardless of like how I felt. What about you? I've had a couple of what ifs, but my thing is like, I understood me breaking it off that yes, it may have been a great set up with me and her, but ultimately I'm not happy in this moment. Mm -hmm. And for my career, my business, if I'm not happy in the moment, then the point of me staying to maybe figure it out isn't worth the worth the cause. So my thing is like, yes, it may happen where you, so you know what, damn, she's she's valuable, she's amazing, but at some point you gotta say, yo, I'm on a mission here. If she in any way is gonna cause me to falter, I can't be here anymore. I gotta move on because guess what? When I move on, the other girls now yeah. they're not they, they may not be her. But they'll do just the same. Well, right. you, sh you should be leveling up and it should be the case that you are upgrading yes. each time. If yes. not, then you need to reset And he says something really interesting. He said, I'm not happy right now. And I think the, the phrase happy wife, happy life is the biggest bullshit ever. Facts. It needs to go, you know, happy man, happy land, right? Because yeah, yeah. the reality is, is that as a man, if you're happy and fulfilled, I promise you, your girl's girl going to be happy and fulfilled yep. too. Because as the leader... Right. If you're striving, you're, you know, chasing excellence, you're getting things done. The woman is always going to benefit because mm -hmm. she's your girl. Men are OK with sharing their resources. So if a man is really winning in life, his girl's going to, you know, drive the fr fruits of that labor. But when a woman is happy. Right. And human as human beings, we're designed to constantly be chasing, you know, more and more to some degree, assuming we're not lazy and too content. But with women. Right. It's very difficult to please them. So for her to get pleased, she needs to know that you're she's she's being she's pleasing you. Women get the most fulfillment and joy when they're serving a man that they love, admire, and respect. They can't get it from a career to the same degree that they get it from the validation of a family and a husband, right? And they've done studies on this that prove that women overwhelmingly choose family and children versus a career. They did a study in this with Ireland where after COVID, everyone went back to the workforce. 
like I think something like 60% of the women plus were like, no, I want to stay. I, I don't want to go back to work. I'm just going to stay here with my family because they had been working from home all that time and they just preferred to be with loved ones. And there's nothing wrong with that. Like I don't demonize women that stay at home. I think that's the best way to raise a child. You know, fuck a daycare, raise the kid yourself. You created it. But um, the reality is, is that when the man is happy, the woman is going to get that happiness as well because he's doing what he needs to do. He's fulfilling the duties of the household and then she in turn it wins. But when it's the other way around where he's prioritizing her happiness, well, guess what? You just pedestalized her inadvertently yeah. without her knowing it. And then now she has no choice but to sit there and be like, man, this dude's like bending over backwards to impress me. Man, fuck that shit. Now, are there some girls out there that could appreciate that? For sure. Maybe a hundred years ago when, <laughs> you know, chivalry was a thing. But in today's day and age where women and men are seemed as equal to a lot of modern day women, that's the worst thing you can do. I like what you said in the book. You said you need to have an understanding that most relationships are not going to work out. So you shouldn't pin your happiness on something fleeting and largely out of your control. Bam. Because women are emotional creatures. Mm. So their emotions are changing by the minute, by the hour, by the day. So you need to pin your happiness on something that you can control, which is what your success, your destiny, and then the woman's a byproduct. That's why I'm so big on telling guys, you need to be happy. She's going to be happy from serving you. Mm -hmm. But if you serve her, she's in the authority position and you're uh, chasing her validation. When you're chasing a woman's validation, it's not the same. Girls, right? A woman's mating strategy, shout out to Roald Tomasi, he talks about this extensively in The Rational Male. A woman's mating strategy is based, it's called hypergamy, which is chasing the best guy that she can, right? Getting the best guy that she can. It's constantly trying to upgrade, get the best deal. But that mating strategy is based in doubt. So since it's based in doubt, you need to eliminate that doubt by being the best man that she can that she can get. And the only way for her to 100% feel that she's getting the best deal is that she's constantly chasing your validation. If she's chasing your validation, she don't got time to show her ass on Instagram. She don't got time for ladies' nights out. She don't got time for all this other BS that a lot of girls end up doing because they know that they got their guy locked in and secured. She needs to be chasing you and not know where she stands. When that's going on, that's when she's the happiest. Mm not when it's the other way around. That's why I tell guys all the time, the girl needs to like you more than you like her. And the only way that happens is you're striving, you're being excellent, she's following your lead, you're happy. And then on top of that, you can replace her anytime. And I know it sounds evil for me to say it that way, but that's how you get the best out of women. Since the beginning of time, women have always been attracted to men that have social proof, that have other women, that have a strong circle of friends, et cetera. And that's the only way she's gonna feel happy. Her hypergamy is satisfied because she's chasing you, so the doubt is gone. And she knows that she can be replaced. That's how you get a loyal and dutiful girlfriend. I think it's important as well. You need to, regardless of if you're male or female, you need to be happy single. Mm. Like you can't yeah. put your happiness into yeah. a relationship or another person. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because then you're constantly a slave to that relationship and thinking, well, I'm only going to be happy if I'm with this person. Yeah. Like, here's the scary I, part though. I, I, I experienced that when I was 21. I remember I thought, oh, well, you know, I'm at my happiest when I'm with this person. And if I'm not with this person, then I'm not going to be happy. Yeah. And then I tried to make this, the relationship was pretty much dead. Yeah. Yeah. I just dragged it on mm -hmm. thinking that this was the only way that I could be happy. But here's the scary part. With girls, women are far more um, people oriented. Like people, derive, women derive their pleasure the most from like, you know, so being social. That's why they're socially superior to men. Like a girl could walk in a room and size up everyone and figure out the relationships immediately right? Versus a guy, we got, it's like a learned skill for us. We don't figure it out, right? Assuming we study game and, you know, pick up and all this other stuff. Later it on. takes us a decade plus to learn it. Yeah. A girl that's 18 knows right away, oh yeah, this girl's not smashing him. He's in a friend zone, blah, blah, blah. We got to learn this stuff. For them, it's natural. So for girls, they derive more of their pleasure from being in social situations and having a man. Every girl, whether she wants to admit it or not, wants to be in a relationship with a guy. No girl wants to be single. I think men need to learn how to be single, like for mm. sure. Women should too, but a lot of their natural happiness state comes from being around other people. And a lot of times for them, that comes at the end of a, a family and children and a husband. But yes, men yes. need to learn how to be independent 100%. Yeah. I think you mentioned the majority of your 20s, you were really chasing girls. You were focusing on yeah. your work. I was working yourself. for Homeland Security, doing uh, criminal investigations. I was really pursuing that, going really hard. Uh, you know, Mexican cartel cases, wiretaps, big, you know, conspiracy cases. Uh, and then when I moved to Miami, that's when I started like getting back into the scene with women more. So most of my, and that was, I was 28, 29 at that point. So most men during that period of time, or well, the majority of the time, but at least in their twenties, they should be focusing on themselves. Yeah. Right. But the problem with a lot of guys at this age is that they will have desires and they're probably the horniest they're ever going to yeah. be. Yeah. So it's tough. how does a guy ignore that? 
desire. So you be- don't have to ignore it, but I, I get what you're saying here. So for example, here's what you can do, right? This is what I did. For the first year and a half when I came to America, what I did was I worked my ass off. Mm-hmm. I worked two jobs, day and night, and I would just take breaks to eat, go to sleep, right? However, in my free time, let's say I had a day off or maybe after work, I would actively go to like Tinder, you know, Bumble, whatever, try to get a date, and I'll go through experiences on, on going on dates. So the, the free time I had after I worked on myself. So and, you allocated it. Yes, but I didn't focus on it. So it's only an after effect. So I did my work first. When I was free, I had nothing else going on. Then I'll put towards, you know what? I'll go on a date or two. That allowed me to focus on my purpose, my passion. And over time, what happened is I got further ahead in life. The further I got ahead in life, the higher value girls I got, I, got, I got to get. So putting that first and then say, you know what? All right, I got free time right here. Maybe two hours, three hours. I'll go on a date. I'll set it up. And that kept me in the game, in the know. But I was focused on my, on my purpose as well. Because if you neglect girls, bro, all the way, you get money and status, it's like, you don't know how to handle you, them. You don't need to do any work when you get to that point where you got the status. True. I mean, you still need to because you need to understand how women operate. But like, it's more like you're going to be on two levels, successful, but still understand uh, female nature. And you could get finessed. I, I would say, um, so when I was working, this is my ratio, and I don't know if guys can can do this, but it's up to them if they want. What I did was, because I lived in Laredo, Texas, which is on the Mexican border, right? So there was nothing out there. It's like Breaking Bad out in the desert, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, once a year in August, typically, I would go back home to Connecticut, you know, uh, and I grew up, I'm from New Bern, Connecticut originally. And a lot of my friends were in the Boston area and New York and Connecticut smack dab in between those two uh, states. Uh, well, Massachusetts and New York. So I would go visit friends, et cetera. I'd take like a month vacation, right? A, a month of leave when I was working for the government. I'd hang out, I'd go party with my friends, blah, blah, blah. I'd take that month and then I'd like go back in September and then right back to work, right? So I'd take like three weeks to four weeks off and I did this once a year. And I did that for several years while I was living in in, uh, in South Texas. But, um, you know, a lot of guys might not be able to do that. So I would say come up with some kind of ratio. Maybe you grind eight weeks straight and you take one weekend out or maybe you grind six weeks straight, take one weekend out and go out with girls or, you know, you do it in your free time where you're on dating apps, scanning, et cetera. And it's, it's going to suck. You might go through dry periods. You might have to fap a little bit every now and then, right. To alleviate that stress or whatever. Right. But don't get, but see, that's where you get in the touchy spot. Yeah, where, you don't want to get addicted to porn. You got to be able to, you got to be able to, you know, control that. But I'm not saying don't go out and get girls. Like you should definitely learn a game and go out and deal with women. My thing is, a lot of guys overdo it and they spend all their time chasing after girls. And that's like, when you do that, what ends up happening is you end up having to chase girls because you haven't built your value up yet to a point where you're attractive enough to get girls to be interested in you. I'm the, of course, you have to get out there and talk to women and put yourself out there, but you want to do the work up front so that you, have to, you don't have to put as much work in when you deal with them. You mentioned, uh, there's a part of the book when you were talking about uh, men moving into their own place. Mm-hmm. And if their main motivation to get their own place in their own apartment is purely just so they can get girls and get laid in peace, he's saying that's terrible. It's an absolute waste of money. So in your opinion, when is it the right time for a guy, maybe early 20s, whatever it might be, to actually go off and get their own place I to would live? say once you actually make some money, and it depends what your goals are, right? So like if you're trying to buy real estate or whatever, you might want to live with your folks for a little bit longer so that you can go ahead and save up the capital to get a real estate property or get an FHA loan. My thing is, I don't want guys spending too much money out of pocket early in their 20s where they're going broke to pay their rent just so they can fuck girls. Like, that's mm-hmm. stupid. You know, um, if, you, if you really need to, go ahead and get an Airbnb or get a hotel for a weekend or whatever it may be. But, like, you should really be building and uh, learning a skill set, making more money, etc. Now, for me personally... I was able to uh, get out of my parents' house at about 23 and I was working for the government and I was able to land a good job out of there. So I had enough money to get an apartment and, you know, and everything like that. But I just don't want guys spending a ridiculous amount of their money on an apartment when they don't have the money. Because a lot of guys, they'll go broke to have an apartment to try to have sex with girls. And it's like, bro, why? Mm -hmm. Here's another thing you can do as well. Have a roommate that you trust, that you're cool with. And obviously you have separate bedrooms, but like, it's more like that roommate lowers the cost of you actually having to pay rent and you can still live in a nice area. And, you know, with some game, proper attire, proper cleanliness, girls can still come over, come to your spot, still have fun, but you're paying half the money. Mm-hmm. You should be able to pay your rent four times. Yeah. Four to five times. And I would say, okay, once you can pay that rent four to five times, cool, move out. You should get a, a housemate who's actually switched on as well. And it's not exactly. going to be a distraction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't, yeah. You, you can't, yeah. You got to have someone like... Um, Didn't... Uh, 
Sterling Cooper and Justin Waller, did, did they used to live together? Yeah. 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 So, so that would have been yeah. pretty fucking amazing. And, and they're both Gary. really... Yeah. And here's the thing. <laughs> Shout out to Justin and yeah, Sterling Cooper, cool, friends cool. of ours. Yeah. And here's the thing. They're both... They got money, both of them. Yeah. Like millionaires, right? They but they live together. Well. Yeah. And the, but exactly. So they... And they both understand women. But the reason why they live together, right? Iron sharpens iron. And I do think that it's good to live with guys that are like-minded, that are sharp, that can push you to become better, right? Because for them, it's like they had like this nice penthouse in Miami. You know, it's different. It's not, it's not like they're having roommates together because like, oh my God, we got to cut on bills. Like, no, they're both millionaires. They both do, yeah. do really well. But that's an example of living together because iron sharpens iron. Mm. Andrew and Tristan, same situation, live together because having uh, strong masculine men in Conable. your circle, right, yeah. will help you become a better man overall because- you're constantly competing with each other. You lead that. You need other masculine men around you to keep you sharp. However, and this is why I'm so big on guys not moving in with their girlfriend, right? If you move well, you in, say, with you, you say not to do that. Don't yeah, move yeah. in with your girlfriend. When you move in with your girlfriend, she's gonna soften you up because, yeah. like I said in, before, <laughs> yeah, everyone gets fat. Yeah, you get fat. And, and like I said in the book, women are lazy. People get mad. Oh my god, that's so misogynistic. No, it's realistic. Women are naturally lazy creatures, and the reason why is because they don't, they don't have a proclivity to create resources in excess. They have a proclivity to create children and do the best by those children. They're very different in what they prioritize with their energy. Men are to go out and create resources, women to create uh, children and take care of those children. That's not to say what men do is better than what women do. We need each other in unison. But what I am saying is that when it comes to working hard and being productive, women have a different mm -hmm. mindset with that. So living with a girl is counterproductive to you. And then on top of that, right, you're living with her the mystery is gone. She knows what you do all the time. She sees where you're at. That's when women start to get comfortable when you live with them because they know that you can't replace them a lot of times. She's your only source of sex. A lot of times when guys move in with their girl, they think, I'm going to save money. I'm going to get laid more. It actually goes down. You get laid less because she knows where you're at all the time and her mind, right, isn't racing or guessing. I've always said a, a man's best tool with to defeat hypergamy is imagination. I'm not saying you got to go out and fuck another girl, but if she thinks you are or that you're capable of doing it, that keeps that's going to make keeps her on her toes and she's going to stay more attracted to yep. you. But so living with a girl, you lose a lot of the leverage that you have and quite frankly, men don't have much leverage when it comes to relationships and dealing with women. Mm. So you have to play every single one of your cards to the best of your ability. Living with a girl hurts you as a man. Yeah. I I've been living alone for the past I think since I was 26. Nice. And I don't think I could change it. Yeah. But this is the thing, though, because at some point I want kids. Mm -hmm. Now, what am I going to do in that situation? Because <laughs> I'm hoping I get to the point where I've got numerous properties and I can have like, I either have a very big one where I've got my own little space or like every now and then I'm like, oh yeah, I'm going to my apartment. Yeah, yeah. I think, I like, think have, the best have way... Have the distance every now and then. Yeah, I think the optimal way to do that, and Andrew and Tristan kind of do this, is where you put the wife and the kids, right, in a, in a home... And, uh, and you know, you come in and out and you there, you have them close by, you, you provide, you take care of them, et cetera. And, you know, let's be honest here, a dad, what's your job? You know, you, you really need to come in, in the, in the baby years, right? In the formative years, that's not that big. That's the woman's job. She's more nurturing, et cetera. The man's job is to come in as the reinforcement of how the world really works in their teenage years, when they're teenage years, when they're most susceptible to drug use, doing stupid stuff, um, you know, not going to school, et cetera. So you don't necessarily, as a disciplinarian, you don't need to be there every single day, right? Mm -hmm. I think going going out there, chasing your mission, creating resources, et cetera, the mom can be there most of the time and then you come in when needed. And if you're close by, you can, you're always a call away. But I think number one, to keep the traction there, to, you know, maintain some semblance of a nuclear family, you don't need to be there every day and sleep there. You can show up every day and not sleep there, mm -hmm. you know? And I think that's a way to do it, to get around it. It's just that, you know, and it's sad that we even have, we have to come up with all these counter strategies, right? Right. For like, you know, the modern day uh, woman. But I think that's one way to to combat it or just being with a, a, with a girl that is more traditional in a sense where that might not necessarily hurt you to the same degree. Right. Um, you know, you can get a girl in Colombia or something like that. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Right. Where they might appreciate that a little bit more. Whereas like in the United States, that might not be as feasible. So there's different ways. It depends on a girl. Every girl is different. But I think that's a strategy where you can have an apartment not too far away and your girl is there. I'm going to have it by having multiple wives. That's my strategy. <laughs> Are you uh, you Muslim? Yeah. So that's... You can do that. Yeah. Yeah. Four wives. Mm -hmm. And I, I do will admit, you know, for full disclaimer, I'm not the best Muslim, but I am working on it. I'm going to get my Arabic uh, up and everything like that. But well, definitely what, what, I'm going to What have, is it you need to work on? Uh, man. 
Well, I don't really drink like that. So that's, that's one thing that's, I've never done a drug in my life. It's really the uh, dealing with women is like the only thing that I'd be doing. That's like haram. Like I don't even eat pork or wear gold or anything like mm -hmm. that. Um, and, and I need to, and I need to pray. I need to start praying five, five times, times a day. Yeah. yeah. So if I get those things in check, I'll, I'll be, I'll be good. I'll be a mukman. <laughs> Did you do Ramadan? Yeah. I, 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 I haven't fasted recently, but I definitely do fast as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, during Ramadan. Do you think it'd be easier to follow those practices being in the Middle Eastern country versus Yeah, it definitely own? would be. It definitely would be. And that's what I kind of, because I've been thinking to myself, like, you know, when I do want to have a family and children, what am I going to do? I'm going to hundred percent have to move to, you know, a place like this or a Kuwait or a Qatar or Saudi Arabia or something like mm -hmm. that, where I can raise a family because Dubai is very safe. And I like that. Um, raise a family without like the degeneracy of the West, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And, uh, and here like nuclear families are still respected. Uh, you know, men are respected here. Uh, the men are, the, the, you know, the leaders of, of society and it's, it's just how it should be. You know what I mean? It's, it's the, Oh my God, it's the patriarchy. Patriarchies work. That's why we have the civilized world. We have no mm -hmm. matriarchy stood the test of time. There's nothing wrong with patriarchies, you know, men lead women follow. So, uh, I think that would be most optimal. So I would, I think having multiple wives, right. Number one, keep everything in check. And then also, uh, you know, satisfy me and then be able to have more children. What about you? Uh, I'm still trying to figure out what, what I want to do, uh, to be honest with you. But I, I will say uh, eventually I do want to find uh, someone that I can share life with, experiences. Mm -hmm. um, but once again, uh, I'm going to have my own spot. She's going to have a spot with the kids. And yeah. I think that's the best way to be, you mm -hmm. know, just so you have to space. Because space gives you the opportunity to like miss somebody, but at the same time, at least mystery. You, you also need mystery no matter what. Mm -hmm. Yeah, girls really need it. Yeah. You know, men, not so much. Like for us, it's like, okay, I know where my girl's at. Awesome. Yeah. Like men don't lose attraction for knowing where, like what their girl's up to. Yeah. Women, however, do lose attraction. So that's why guys have to play like that. Mm -hmm. What about you? What, what's your strategy going to be? I know you, you want to have a family. Are you going to have multiple chicks or? Well, I'd, I'd, if that's going to be the case, I'm going to have to find women who are going to be okay with that. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm going to be honest, fully honest. Yeah. And it's interesting because. I think like, if your value is high enough, a lot of girls will accept yeah. it. Yeah. It's, it's just so funny because I'm thinking about everybody else in my family. Yeah. They've all gone down a completely different route. Yeah. Every, all my cousins, brother, my brother's getting married in two months. Everybody else is married. And I'm just like, wow, that's just... Have you talked to him? Like, don't do it. He's too far gone, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. he's, 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 he's been with her for, uh, since university. So they've been together like eight, nine years. Damn. Oh, wow. So it's, it's, it's annoying, actually. I spoke to uh, Tristan about this on, yeah. when I was doing the podcast with him. Yeah. That was a good one. Like, I... I I kind of wish that I'd spent more time with him or he'd, you know, been with me because I think, you know, I could have taken him down a different path. path. Mm -hmm. He's younger than you? Two years below. Two, okay. So he's but I mean, he's, he's happy. They're both happy together. Like, I don't want to be the person that changes that. Yeah. But he, there's definitely a different life he could have had. Yeah. But I don't think he's about that life, to be honest. Nothing wrong I think with marriage. Weird. Just the state, man. And it, I'm assuming he's probably doing this in the UK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, God. But I think he's, he's just, he's, he's not like me. Like, I like the sense of adventure taking risk and he's very kind of risk averse and he's quite happy with stability yeah and i think maybe he's just but marriage is risky though yeah it's not stable because she can leave at any with time state yeah but I, yeah I, I, mean, I, don't, I don't know what's gonna he's, happen he's happy right now mm. i'm telling you right now if things don't go how she wants things to go and she leaves his ass bro. Mm. that's why women love marriage so much is yeah. because it's like a security blanket for, for them. them like and it's it, it literally because i've i ask the question a pot all the time Name one benefit that men get from marriage, mm. right? And and girls really can't like name anything. Like there's no benefit to getting that you. you there's no benefit kids. to marriage that you can't get like in a regular yeah. relationship, like non marriage involved. Get a home and kids. Say, oh, tax breaks. Okay, those tax breaks go out the window if you divorce me. Like save a, a thousand, two thousand bucks a year on taxes. Okay, you're gonna get more than that in alimony and child support. Oh yeah, you see a lot of these high profile. A celebrity's Dr. getting divorced. Getting what's, what, what's the, yeah, how much did he lose? Oh, man. Was it 800 million? I think he's got to pay her like a uh, million dollars a month or something <laughs> wild like that. Yeah. Like something crazy a, a month. They just settled. I forget what the numbers mm. were, but she Can't spent remember. some ridiculous amount of money. Uh, like when they actually like itemized it, it's like $100,000 on clothes, like $50,000 on like kids. Like it's uh, it's something ridiculous. Mm. Wow. You mentioned the book, the, the Tom Brady Gamble. What's yeah. that? So the Tom Brady gamble is basically where the guy, right, becomes the top tier dude like a Tom Brady, but you can still lose your girl like you did with Giselle. Mm -hmm. And like, if you look at Tom Brady, right, from on paper, he's like the optimal guy, like multiple Super Bowls, Chad, you know, famous, 
They got the status, the looks, everything, right? He got Giselle, and he still couldn't even keep her. So what I tell guys is... Did she walk away from that? I think she initiated yeah. the divorce, yeah. You know, and I think a big part of that, too, is that he's not red pill aware. Like, if 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 a dude is RP aware and has a status, like, he'll keep his girl in check. But clearly, you know, he probably was simping on some stuff, supplicating to her, etc. Because the reason why she left him is like, oh, he works too much or he wants to continue playing and whatever. It's like, yeah, bitch, like, this is how you met me. This I was a winner when you met, this, met me. This is how it goes. But the thing is, is that he probably lost frame or whatever. Because typically when a girl leaves you like that and you're that level of guy, you did something where she lost respect for you or you lost frame. But I talk about how even as becoming a top tier guy, you can still lose the girl. Mm -hmm. And I want guys to understand that just because you become successful and you become this guy, it's not a guarantee because women are fleeting and emotional creatures, which means they're, they change their moods with, you know, they always say the phrase, you know, it's not your turn. It's not, she's not yours, just your turn. Mm -hmm. I think if guys like really internalize that and accept it and understand I'm going to become the best guy for me and then a woman's a byproduct they'll be able to go through life a little bit better. Because a lot of times when guys, you know, do terrible things to them, whether it's self-deletion or whatever it may be, it typically comes from a girl because they didn't have the answers. They didn't know why she left them or the breakup. But when guys understand why things happened, yeah. they're able to accept it to a degree and then move on. But when they don't get that closure and know why, that's when the self-deletions happen, you know? Because human beings, especially men, if you think about it, there's always been this conquest for knowledge. Like every modern convenience that we have here was created by a man that was curious, that wanted to figure out, figured it out and create an invention. But when men don't figure it out, right? A lot of times it drives them mad. And mm -hmm. sometimes the end of the madness is a, a noose or a knife or a gun or whatever it may be. And we're on YouTube. I don't want to go too deep. But you know what I'm saying with the self-deletions. So sometimes being able to pick up my book or the rational mail or whatever, and you exp we explain to them, this is how women makes like, this is how it really is. The Disney fairy tales are not real. Then they're like, oh, that's why she left me. They get that closure and they're able to move on with life versus ending their life. Mm -hmm. I think it's mad. There's, there's so many people who, and I, I've had guy friends do this, They've been pretty young and they've said to themselves, yeah, I'm going to marry this girl. Yeah, I'm like, bro, I don't think that's a very good idea. Yeah, But they are adamant that it's the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. And 99% of the time it ends up being a terrible decision. It's and I think a lot of old order thinking, a lot of guys don't understand that what you're feeling right now is a feeling. It's not going to last. When that feeling goes, are you going to want to be with this person for the rest of your life? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's a very, very feminine characteristic to do that because mm. they're looking at how they feel right now and making a permanent decision based on a temporary feeling. And um, do, you know, know, do you know why I think a lot of guys do that? It's because they, they probably think they've been lucky and their value is actually higher than theirs. So they feel insecure and think, oh shit, she might like, I'm, I'm punching here. Mm -hmm. Maybe she might go and get with somebody else. Yeah. Mm. So I'm going to try and tie it out. That's yeah. a good point. Yeah, no, and that's a fantastic point. That comes to the scarcity mindset, right? So many guys have a scarcity mindset when it comes to girls. It's like, oh my God, I got a girl. She sucked my dick. Oh my God, I need a wife her down, a wife her up immediately. And what guys don't understand is that when you look at a girl, right? She's 18, 19, 20, 21. Ask them, do you want to get married? A lot of them will say no. Why? Well, because they have an abundance mindset because they got guys inviting them to boats. They got guys willing to fly them to Dubai. They got guys that want to take them to New York City, whatever. So they're like, wow, the world is my oyster. I don't want to settle down. My value is really high right now, right? If you take any average like 18, 19, 20, 21, 22 year old, I want to chase a career, whatever, right? But guys, on the other hand, their value is low. So they're like, yo, I need to consolidate and get a girl right now because they have a scarcity mindset. So I want guys to have an abundance mindset because when you have an abundance mindset, you're able to better detect a girl that is worthy of a relationship versus a girl that isn't. But when yeah. guys are in a scarcity mindset, they're thinking with this head versus this head, well, they start to make really bad decisions. And you see that, you know, with the divorce courts, et cetera. I mean, military guys are cr chronically make this mistake. Well, they'll get married at 18 years old to give their girl the benefits and she ends up leaving him anyway when he's deployed. Sad. So guys, I have a rule. This might be controversial. <laughs> uh, I talked about this on Mo Vlogs and they didn't like it too much, but I think a guy <laughs> needs to be 35 years old, had sex with 50 girls, making six figures a year, have six months to one year savings and go to the gym, gym actively. And when you have those five things in place, you're going to be head and shoulders above most men and you'll be in a position where a good amount of women will respect you, hmm. right? Your accomplishments. And when you're competent, you get accomplishments and then that leads to confidence. And when you get that, bam, girls can read that because that confidence is genuine, not, you know, artificial. And then you'll be able to command that respect from the girl and be able to get in a relationship where you're the leader, 
she follows your lead. And you're going to have some semblance of female nature because you've had sex with 50 girls. Now, normally, right? I know this sounds terrible to say it like that, but the reason, the reality is, is that as a man having less sexual experience will come back and hurt you because women nowadays are more promiscuous than ever before. So if your girl has more sexual experience than you, that's a problem because she's going to use that against you. Mm -hmm. And what most girls do, this is girl game in a nutshell, leverage sex for compliance. That's what girls do to guys 99% of the time. Take me on a date. Oh, I only do that if we're in a relationship, blah, blah, blah. Girls always leverage their sexuality for compliance for men. As a, as a man, your job is to be like, okay, sex can't control me because I've hooked up with other girls. I know what this game is. I know what uh, a good girl is versus a bad girl. You can't play this game with me. And it's amazing how when girls know that they can't leverage sex against you, they start to comply. Mm. But when they can leverage it against you, that's when the disrespect happens. Yeah. So my thing is when you had have your money on point, you're a little bit older and wiser, 35 years old, you've been around the block, you've had sex with 50 girls, bare minimum. You understand female nature to a degree where now you can come into a relationship, get with a girl that's younger than you, that's more impressionable. You can coach her, make her the best girl, and then bam, have a healthy relationship. Damn. Solid. Good shit. So you guys are here for another couple of days in Dubai. What's the plan when you go back to Miami? What's the future of Fresh and Fit? Uh, more shows. Yeah. Um, I just said... We're going to have you on. Yeah. That's, uh, what we're, yeah. that's yeah. the future. Yeah. You know, Mike I'm long overdue a trip to the States. Dude, you, need to, it, you need to come and do a show in Miami, bro. We'll put you on a panel with some chicks. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> no, listen, <laughs> Dubai is fun and beautiful as well, but Miami is too. I, I'm, no, I'm going to say I've, this. I've been to Miami before. Oh, yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun, man. Yeah, it was good. I think I was back when I was 20, yeah, 28. Come back, yeah, bro. Make a trip. Imagine Mike at Muscle Beach on South yeah. Beach. You could you could vlog the whole trip, mm. do a, a couple pods with us, because if you're in town for a couple days, we'll do a couple shows, man. Yeah. But is it, there's, there's just a whole load of people, Miami, LA, New York. I need to do like a, it'll probably be a whole month trip. Do a US tour, bro. I'll bring uh, the crew with me as well. Yeah, These, might as well. It'd be cool. Do when when tour, is the man. best time to go to Miami? Right now, uh, actually, actually, wait, hold on. Yeah, it, it could go right, right around now. Spring break, summertime, Art Basel. Honestly, any time, bro. It's like right now is actually when's up Basel? I heard that's cool. More like December, the, yeah, oh, okay, November, yeah. December, yeah. But right now it's gonna be gonna be spring break. It's gonna be crazy. Yeah, mm. and uh, music week because Ultra is in Miami third week Ultra. of March. So that's gonna that's Miami music week. Like you should come right around then, bro. We're going it's Ultra. Gonna be lit. Yeah, you get involved in those shenanigans, do you? Anyway, uh, well, I used to go to music <laughs> festivals all the time. I haven't been to a music festival since man twenty. 20- well, to be fair, we took a long break focused on the podcast. Now we're a little bit more established. We're going to party a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Celebrate a little bit. Yeah, we might we might go to Ultra this year. Yeah. Um, I'll see. But yeah, dude, you should definitely come uh, mm. third week of March. It's lit. Miami is, is a good time. It's, it's one of the few places where the women are still like, you know, feminine, attractive, because there's a very strong Latin influence, right? Mm-hmm. Of course, you got your 304s as well. But, um, you know, not as many fat people. Right, America's just filled with fat people. It's ridiculous. <laughs> but Miami, it's like, it's different. Like, we're the one of the most fit cities in the United States, actually. Mm. Yeah. I think after COVID, a lot of more switched on people went there. I'm sorry. Yeah. A lot of people, after COVID, a lot of people from Cali. Oh, every, yeah, like, yeah. A lot New of York, entrepreneurs. Dude, Miami's exploded in the past, like, two years. Because um, all the, and I know this from being in real estate. I was able to actually, I own four, four properties in Miami. I was able to increase the rents on all of them. And the reason why is because the New Yorkers, the Californians, people from Massachusetts, anywhere that was like a blue state in the United States, we, blue means democratic, which is, tends to be more liberal, which is higher taxation. People left from those states to come to Florida, which is typically more of a red state, which is more Republican, which means a little bit more conservative, less taxes, right? If I'm going to you know, boil it down to simple terms for the international audience, uh, people would move to Florida and Texas because there's no state income tax. It's cheaper to live, et cetera. That, but that's raised the rents, of course. But it's been like blowing up places like, uh, you know, Orlando, Miami, Tampa, all the major cities in Florida, Texas. You know, you got Joe Rogan, uh, mm. uh, Elon Musk. They all went to Texas, Austin, uh, Houston, uh, San Antonio, uh, Dallas. All these places have blown up over the past two years because of uh, the beer bug, because people want to get out these expensive states. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And why am I going to spend, you know, $10,000 a month for a closet in New York City, you know, to be in the cold weather with high crime and, you know, rats and everything else when I could work from home? And if I could work from home, I'd rather be in Florida. Yeah. No. So, guys, where can everyone find this? Amazon, man. Uh, you look so, so, that's the only time I've seen you in a suit. Uh. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, man. Got him. Yeah. You normally I wear merch. But yeah, man. Yeah, guys, the book is out. It's it's doing well. It, we, it, You know, it's funny. Uh, number one in feminist theory. 
That, yeah, I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> the feminists are mad. I, I, I looked at that the other day because obviously when I went to buy it, it was there, number yeah. one. Yeah. And like all the other books surrounding it, I was like... Ah. And the third book is like, uh, the, the the first book is this one. And then the second one is the Kindle. And then the third book is like some book on how to be a hoe. So I'm just like, yeah, <laughs> sticking it to feminism. Dude. <laughs> Took it over. And, and a lot of girls, surprisingly, like I repost some of my stories. A lot of girls send me pictures saying like, oh yeah, I bought the book. It's like a lot of couples watch us and a lot of married women mm. uh, like watch our content. And they're like, yeah, you know what? Even like girls get more concerned with like the delivery, but like girls that are in relationships, a lot of people watch it together. And they're like, damn, like this has actually yeah. made me a better girlfriend because we tell women the truth like yo this is what it takes to keep a man and they're like damn i watch y'all because you know you go to dr phil and one of these other stupid ass shows it's, you know it's, it's too soft they yeah and they don't tell women the truth like bro yeah I, i've always said it when you lie women buy there's an entire economy built upon lying to women and deceiving them because since women are more impressionable and we talked about that in the book too mm. like how women hold a majority of the debt they're consumers in general so like if, you, if you're an advertiser, you're a marketing agency and you want to market to women, what are you going to say? You're not going to say, stop being a fat bitch and being annoying. You're going to say, love your curves and you're a strong independent queen. Yeah. You're not going to tell them the truth that their behavior is repulsive to majority men. You're going to tell them, be strong in that. And then the music perpetuates that. You know, you got Beyonce saying, oh yeah, all the single ladies, you know, strong and independent. And, you know, uh, he, I could have another you in a minute. I talk about that in the book too. And Beyonce is the biggest hypocrite. Jay-Z cheated on her. She ain't go nowhere. Mm. Rihanna, right? She's on the cover of, uh, what is it, Vogue? Vogue. Vogue, British Vogue, with, you know, ASAP Rocky leading him, etc. Like, look at me, I'm the strong, dominant woman, blah, blah, blah. Sierra, you know, coming out with a song right now. They're roasting her on Twitter because she was, she's talking about being strong and independent. And he, women are starting to catch on. Like, wait, you got a man. Why are you talking about being strong and independent? Like, we have an entire culture, going back to the female role models, we have an entire culture that perpetuates women being strong, independent, single, not needing a man. But the reality is that sets them up for unhappiness and perpetuity it's mm. ridiculous so yeah man i mean girls that want to be in relationships girls that have a man etc they typically tend to resonate with what guys like me fresh andrew tate like they're like damn you know what it, this this stuff is true matter of fact real funny story we had this girl come on the show uh like two weeks ago beautiful russian girl right 33 years old you know she believed the feminist lie was out in new york partying entrepreneur making money etc you know had some relationships here and it wasn't until she found Andrew Tate that she said, damn, what am I doing? I'm 33. I don't have a man. Like, I need to reassess. Now, obviously, she's a little bit older, right? She's pretty, so I think she'll be able to find a guy. But she even came on the podcast and said, feminism is a lie. Like, I literally would feel famous. Like, and this was a higher earning woman living in New York City, living that dream of sex in the city lifestyle. And she even said, like, no, like, because we had a bunch of other younger girls on the panel. She was like, guys, hmm. find a man now when your sexual market value is high. And that was really powerful to hear from an attractive girl that had lived that life. I mean, mm. hell, the maker of Sex in the City literally has like cats and dogs now and she regrets making that show because it indoctrinated an entire generation of women to chase something that isn't going to give them long-term happiness. And Sierra, Beyonce, the city girls, Cardi B, they tell you, don't cook, don't clean, but still got a ring. But what they don't tell you is Cardi B was cleaning and an offset recorded her dumbass. <laughs> right? Oh, well, you lying to them, blah, blah, blah. But what's, what sells? Selling women this dream that being strong and independent and not needing a man is going to give you long-term happiness. No, it's going to give you cats and dogs and you're not going to be happy. But we don't tell women the truth because we want to sell to them. Nice. So, guys... Fresh and fit. Make sure you check them out. Much appreciated. You guys have got another podcast to do now as well. Yeah. You? yeah. You've been nonstop since you came in. Dude, you're you're one of the best podcast interviewers I've met. Really? By far, bro. You ask really good questions and you just I let you listen. Talk. Yeah. I gotta, like, yeah, and I you, gotta get the feeling you like to talk. So I'm yeah, yeah, talk. yeah, no, I appreciate that. And I've seen your other interviews too. Something mm -hmm. I actually noticed. Mm -hmm. Uh so no man, fantastic show, and thank you so much for having us. Thanks, man.